Well, it's lovely to be here. I'm not sure about the decorating analogy. I lived on a very old houseboat for the past seven years, and we were just happy that it floated. But I'll keep that in mind. Um, I just took up my ICFA work about nine, ten months ago. And I, I took the post because I really believed that ICFA was about the future. And by that, I meant that it was the only global NGO humanitarian network that had memberships from around the world. And having been in the Red Cross, Red Crescent, movement, I was deeply f intrigued by, familiar with, motivated, compelled by, and frightened by kind of what was our future. And I felt that I wanted to see that in the humanitarian NGO world. And I have to say that the longer I stay at ICFA, the less I know. Um, it's probably not very reassuring if I have any board members here or even members. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it's quite true, because I actually think that we have one of the most unclear paths before us, which is about holding us together, at least in dialogue, if not in work. So this report was, um, was very important for me to read because it personally touched upon things that I've been observing and hearing, but it put it out in such a clear and thoughtful and useful way. So thank you to the organizations and, and thank you to Ben and, and the team. Um, of course, I also loved it that it used the state of the humanitarian system as its sort of touchstone. That was meaningful for me because I care so much about that, um, that piece of work and about ALNAP. I wasn't particularly surprised at the findings. I thought that the analysis was really helpful. I thought that the way it was laid out was going to be very useful for our work, but I wasn't that surprised. However, I think what it did make me think more about are the things that we struggle with. So I, I know it's not always nice when someone brings more questions to the table, but you'll <coughs> indulge me, I hope. There's no question about the potential of partnerships. There's no question about, I think, some of the, um, not just the vision, but the practicality of what this report touched upon. But I also think that we're still struggling as a, as a community, which is what makes a humanitarian organization. I can look at the ICFA membership criteria, and it's everything from due diligence around finances to have you signed the code of conduct, do you use Sphere, it's a whole range of things, and I think most of that would be very familiar. I'm not sure that that gets at due diligence, but I don't know if it gets at good humanitarian practice. It gets at what we think is good humanitarian practice. It gets at what we assume to be, but I think this, um, this kind of goes to the issues of what's legitimate, what is quality, and I hate to bring it up because it's not my favorite subject, but this whole certification is, I think, at heart, it, when you think of it with the kind of the best intentions, is really trying to say what are we trying to do? What really brings the best protection and the best assistance to people in crisis? And I think we have a lot of different ideas about how to do it and what it means, very much as Paul noted. Um, so I think that we're not completely, all of us, really clear of what's the measure. We can talk about the generalities, but when it really comes down to it, I think we're on kind of unstable ground. Um, we cling to impartiality, and I'm not, I don't mean to de de derogatory at all, but I think we don't necessarily have all the clearest pieces of what is really good humanitarian action because we understand it differently. And I'm seeing that through the diversity of the ICFA membership. So I'm, I'm bringing it up because I, I, I think this is a, this kind of what is a humanitarian organization is a, a big piece of work that we're still struggling with. I think there are a lot of assumptions about partnership. Um, I think that this report notes, and I think appropriately, that we presume that it's good. We presume that it's necessary. We presume that it's, it's the right thing to do for relevance, for efficiencies, for connectedness. But I also think it makes some assumptions about kind of a, a civil society consistency globally that I'm not sure um, is there. And I think that Paul touched upon this, and I think this is really quite key. Do we mean by partnership replication of who we are, whoever we might be, um, or are we really talking about unique and unknown new relationships that we don't actually even necessarily have the language for? So. Um, this reminded me of a study I just read. It's about um, humanitarian uh, NGOs who are coordinating around IT. And while it's quite different, there there's, was interesting because one of the findings was that the main barrier between these humanitarian NGOs and these IT coordination um, uh, groups were was a conflict of goals and interests. 
not so much about behaviors, um, but really about the most fundamental reason that they were doing their work together. And that, I thought, was quite revealing, because I think that we, um, we presume that we are on the same page in some fundamental ways, and I think sometimes we don't even know to know that we're not. Helpful, right? So someone asked me to speak about the relationship to UN reform, because um, ICFA has been quite involved with that very pleasant undertaking. Um, and we did a, a piece of work with um, some of the NGOs here in this room, um, particularly on national NGOs' relationships to humanitarian reform and the transformative agenda. It's not particularly positive findings, and it's probably not surprising to any of you. Um, the humanitarian reform and the transformative agenda has focused on what you would expect, humanitarian coordination, accountability, predictable funding, um, leadership, humanitarian country teams. It is n we had to drag partnership into the conversation with the UN. We had to remind them that it's fundamentally about partnership. It is not well understood. It is not appreciated. It is not supported. If there's someone here from the UN, I apologize. I'm not trying to offend anyone individually. It is not in that system. However, it is in that system to try to find financial um, uh, efficiencies. And to that end, you're going to, I think, see potential exploitation is the wrong word, but I think jumping over international NGOs to get to nation national NGOs who can fit particular um, business models of the UN. And I think this is something that, that just needs to be thought through because is that bad? Is that good? Good, bad for whom? I mean, is again, is it getting the, the, what are we trying to serve? And I think we still all really struggle with what we're actually trying to serve. So I, I just, I think there's a lot here in the UN that um, is, is problematic, but they are also still pretty big drivers. And their relationship to national <coughs> NGOs, um, as well as international NGOs, is very checkered. Um, and I think we could go into that difference here. I have to be very careful, I forgot. Um, uh, so, um, you know, just to, to end on, on ICFA, because it, it, to me it's such an interesting and important and, and unclear undertaking, which is what does it mean to have 80, 90 diverse members of NGOs from around the world? Um, I think a big chunk of the work that we can and should do is convene and dialogue and figure out what is, when we are looking at partnership. We're looking at partnership through policy and practice, and it's not straightforward. In the Middle East right now, we have Lebanese NGOs who are absolutely furious at the international NGOs there, and they're both in our memberships. So we, at a very direct and individual level, are trying to <coughs> sort out kind of what, are, what role are we trying to play? Dialogue, peacemaker, negotiator? I mean, I think this is what we still don't know in our community of, of what do we, do we really want national NGOs to, to be the main drivers or, or local authorities? Do we, I mean, I think we still don't quite know how to answer those, those questions, except in a kind of, well, of course we want national autonomy. Of course we want national NGOs. But do we, I don't think we know how to break it down into all the complex pieces and then what to do with that. Um, and I think that is our challenge. I think it's, it's a wonderful challenge. It's, a, it's an amazing world we're in. Um, but it is certainly not straightforward. And I think this report helps us with some, with some pieces of where there's real potential. And I love that. And I think it as much has questions that we don't have answers to yet. <laughs>